Today you're joining me at a commercial kingfisher photography hide in the Midlands called Brine Pit Wildlife. Uh, as far as I know it was one of the first commercially available kingfisher photographic hides in the country. Um, it's a fantastic place. I have shot here once before um, and what I'm trying to do is learn as much about the birds as possible. You know because um, they are used to coming here and feeding here and things like that and, and you know they do sit in, in one spot. It's a fantastic opportunity for me to photograph the birds but also sit and watch and, and kind of learn about their behaviour uh, of what they do before they fish um, and um, at the moment they've got um, they've got young here as well so it's um, it's quite nice to be able to um, to have the opportunity to photograph um, the adults and the juveniles together so so that'll be pretty cool um, if we if we get if we're lucky enough to see that um, but yeah let's um, let's crack on and, um, and see what we get it's an early start, so it's time for a coffee. First kingfisher's just arrived. It's just sat on the perch at the moment, so I'm just gonna grab a, a quick couple of shots. It's just sat very still. Let me just show you around the hide a little bit. It's a really big hide. It's more than big enough for, um, well, there's four chairs, full, four spaces for photographers, but it's more than big enough to fit sort of six people in here, really. But today I've got, I've got it to myself, you know, just just pure luck. Um, Sharon, the owner, tells me she normally lets um, sort of two people in here at a time. But it's a lovely, lovely big hide, as you can see. Lots of space. Um, so, what, um, the, what you do get provided with here as well is um, is the gimbals and the kind of tabletop um, plates there as well. I'm actually looking for one of these plates myself, but um, they're particularly hard to find. Um, well, I'm having trouble finding one anyway, so uh, if you guys know of anybody that does them, please let me know, that'd be, that'd be great. Um, so, let's just see if you can see, but the, the mesh here, there's two layers of this mesh, there's one on the outside, one on the inside, so it does protect you well. Uh, and it is a is a nice window pane there as well, just to protect you from the elements a little bit as well. Um, this below here all slides out of the way, which I'll show you later on. Um, and then there's some um, some mounting points, some some tripod heads, bull heads, uh, just below there as well, so you can set up to get those kind of water level diving shots as well, which will be really cool. Um, and there's plenty of space. You can see, as I'm here by myself, I've not really tidied up too much, but there's some nice benches at the back for to sit on or um, just store your stuff on, some big hooks. Um, there's some cool stuff about the kingfishers up on the walls just behind us, just there. Um, and then just here as well, which is actually really, really handy, is uh, there's a lovely diary so we can see um, all the previous day's action uh, what time the birds were arriving um, how many were around and about how many fish they took so that's a really really nice little um, touch there so yesterday 
um, 9, 8.30, 9.30, 10 o'clock. Um, there was some decent action in the morning. Um, so so that, that's really, really cool to kind of see and, and, uh, and understand. Um, so I'll definitely be keep, keeping track of what's going on today as well. since the first visit, so just trying to make the most of it, you know. It's just fished. And again, brilliant, and it's gone. That was fantastic. That, that was amazing to see. So two visits. Um, so the first one happened quite quickly. Uh, and then the second one's been, uh, what's the time? It's just gone 10 o'clock, so it's been an hour and a half since the um, since the first visit. Um, but that's really cool, you know. So, 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 so happy. I've got some really nice pictures so far. And uh, there's some good footage for you guys to see as well. There's a kingfisher just down on one of the um, natural perches overlooking the stream at the moment. So I'm just using the, um, the Nikon to get some footage of him. I think it's a him anyway, let me just uh, double check. Yeah, it's a, it's a male. He looks fantastic. He's got that beautiful blue stripe against the, uh, the green background there, so it looks fantastic. So we've just had um, our fourth visit of the day. Um, so what I've decided to do now is to try and set up the diving shot. So I'm gonna slide this um, partition out of the way um, below. Uh, I'm gonna place a board onto the diving square where I've roughly worked out the Kingfisher's diving. Um, Pre-focus on that. Um, set my aperture to F8, F9, something like that. Just to give me enough depth of field uh, to try and capture that, di that diving shot. Um, and um, what else am I going to do? Um, I'm going to set the shutter speed to 3200 shutter second. That's just frozen that bird in action really nicely. Um, so I'm going to set that up and I'll, um, I'll show you exactly what I'm going to do. So there's the um, the post just there. I've pre-focused. There we go. Just focus on the post. You'll see as I take my finger off the uh, AF on button. If I touch the shutter button there, the camera doesn't refocus. So that's perfect. But I am going to switch the lens back to manual because I'm paranoid, and it's just what I'm used to doing. You know, so. Switch that back to manual, and then the last thing for me to do is to plug a remote uh, shutter release in, and then it's a matter of sitting and waiting and watching for the kingfisher to appear. Uh, and um, just so you know, so I've just moved my focal length back to 400 mil as well, just hoping that um, that's going to give me enough um, 
you know enough in the image to um, a wide enough shot so I can get the the kingfisher's wings to open potentially as it comes out of the water. Camera's firing, so the um, Nikon set to um, what three thousand two hundred second uh, f eight. That's giving me 2200 ISO, so that's not bad. This guy's really happy just chilling. At least it's facing the right way, isn't it? So nickel is still set to uh, to solid each other. It's um, sticking into the hydrant a bit more down here as well, so just leaving that on. And to be honest, I don't know how to switch that on the Fuji yet. waiting for him. He did this last time though, it's, it must be the same bird. So just stood up with the little bob. I've noticed just before they fish they kind of bob a little bit and I'm kind of checking where the fish are, seeing how deep it is and then they kind of go up and down into the water. So he's just tired, I don't know if I got it because I was too busy messing around with the Fuji. I did get him coming out of the water which is absolutely fantastic, I'm really really pleased with that. Well thank you for joining me, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, I need to say a huge thank you to everybody who's watched the first video and uh, subscribed, it's really really nice and I've had some really nice comments so thank you very much for joining me on my, uh, on my journey. I want to kind of learn about wildlife photography and, uh, and all the internet of it so it's it's absolutely fascinating and i'm loving it um it's just so peaceful and relaxing being out uh, in nature i know i've been hired this time but you know it's, it's amazing to watch the birds so thank you very much for watching me and i'll see you again on the next one